everyone welcome back to my class this is Ruman Ali I hope you all are doing well in today's class a lesson motion and time let us talk about the next type of motion that is rotatory motion now here we are going to take a stone tie that stone with a thread or with a string now hold the string with your thumb and forefinger and swing the string so when you swing the string the stone which is attached to the end of the string it also moves and it moves horizontally as well as vertically and after some time it is going to move in a circular path so this circular motion of the stone is called as rotatory motion here we can take an example of hands and clock blades of a ceiling fan also shows rotatory motion and even the stone that is attached to the string shows rotatory motion whenever the object moves in a circular path at a fixed center or axis then that type of motion is called as rotatory motion here we can take an example of blades of a ceiling fan when you observe the fan this is a fixed path or an axis to this the blades are attached this fixed axis do not move it doesn't move only the blades shows the movement only the blades of the ceiling fan shows the movement and that too they show the circular movement this circular movement or the circular motion is called as rotatory motion so this is how the different objects shows the different movements uh, there are some objects like ball that object shows both translatory motion and rotatory motion so when you observe the movement of the ball when you pull the ball on a table or anywhere else so the ball it moves from one direction to another direction and as it is moving from one direction to another direction it is showing translatory motion but during the movement the ball rolls so the rolling of the ball is called as rotatory motion in this way the ball is an object that shows both translatory motion and rotatory motion let us move to the next type of motion that is oscillatory motion to understand this type of motion also we are going to take one stone tie that stone with a string after tying hold one end of the string and then pull the stone to one side that means oh, hold the stone and pull it uh, slowly to one side then you can observe the motion of the stone the stone will move in this way first it will move in this way then it will move in this way that means to and fro motion can be seen and this to and fro motion of the stone is said to be as an oscillatory motion to understand it let us take some examples that is pendulum of the wall clock also shows to and fro motion swing motion is also an oscillatory motion whenever the object shows to and fro motion that motion or uh, about a fixed point this is a string here is the fixed point and the stone it moves to and then fro this to and fro motion of the stone is called as an oscillatory motion in this way we can find the oscillatory motion even by the pendulum of the clock the pendulum of the clock also shows the to and fro motion and even the swing when a girl sits on the swing she started moving forward and backward this forward and backward movement of the swing by sitting at rest that means about a fixed point this type of motion is called as an oscillatory motion one more example we can take here and that is movement of the needle in a running sieving machine when you observe the movement of the needle it moves upwards and downwards this upwards and downwards movement about a fixed point or along a line is also called as an oscillatory motion so this is about the different types of motion translatory motion is nothing but if an object shows a movement or if all the particles of an object moves in a direction of motion then that type of motion is called as a translatory motion if the object in translatory motion moves along a straight path 
then that is called as rectilinear motion. If it is going to move along a curved path, then that motion is called as curvilinear motion. And, and the objects which moves in a circular path, the movement of that object is called as the rotatory motion. But if the object moves backward or forward, upwards or downwards or to and fro along a fixed path, then that type of motion is called as an oscillatory motion. So, this is about the different types of motion that we can observe by taking the examples of the different objects that we can see in our surroundings. We observe different objects in our daily life that moves or that shows the motion or the movement. So, some objects move slowly and some moves very fast. So, to know the motion of the different objects whether they are moving slowly or whether they are moving fast. We need to know the distance traveled by that object and even the time taken by that object to show the movement. So, time is a word that we use in our daily life. It is defined as the duration in which the object shows the motion or the movement. So, here we will take one example to understand how we can calculate the time. So, there are two boys, Ravi and Satish. Both of them are living in the same society. That means their houses are located side by side. Ravi and Satish, both of them started to school at 8 o'clock. Ravi started to go to school by bicycle uh, and Satish went to school by walk. We can uh, estimate clearly that Ravi reaches the school earlier than Satish because Satish went to school by walk but Ravi went to school by bicycle. But to answer the question how early the Ravi reaches the school, we need to calculate the time. To calculate the time, we need to know the distance traveled by both of them and we need to know the time taken by both of these students. So, by knowing the distance traveled and by knowing the time taken by these students, uh, we can clearly estimate the slow and the fast motion of the objects. So, here time is a unit. So, here time is a duration which can be measured by using different instruments like clocks, electronic clocks, watches, digital clocks. All these are the different instruments that helps us to calculate the time, that helps us to calculate the duration in which the events happen. So, here these are some of the instruments and one main important instrument that we are using in our daily life is stop clock. Stop clock is an instrument that help us to measure the time accurately, that help us to measure the time taken by the two events that occur accurately. Uh, the stop clock is an instrument that we can see in the labs. In the labs, we can use stop clock to measure the time taken by the chemical reactions to occur, to measure the time taken by the pendulum in completing one oscillation, all such kind of things or the event that happen in a particular time, that time can be measured by using stop clock. This stop clock is an instrument that helps in measuring the time even in the races, in running races or in swimming races. And this stop clock can be seen in the cell phones also. Nowadays, the stop clock is present in the cell phones. So, when we open the option of a stop clock and if we want to calculate the time while doing a running race or while doing a swimming race, we can easily calculate the time by using the stop clock that is present in our cell phones. So, this is how the different instruments can be used to calculate the time. And by calculating the time, we can estimate that which object is showing the slow motion and which one is showing the fast motion. Let us talk about the units of time. The basic unit of time is seconds. So, the 60 seconds is equal to 1 minute. 1 60 minutes is equal to 1 hour and 24 hours can mix up a day. That means 24 hours are present in a day or comprises a day. So, let us talk about the units of time. The basic unit of time is seconds and, and even the minutes and hours. Uh, 60 seconds is equal to 1 minute, 60 minutes is equal to 1 hour, 
24 hours makes up a day 365 days comprises one year and 10, 10 years is equal to one decade 10 decades is equal to one century and 10 centuries is equal to one millennium so this is about the units of time that we need to know so by knowing the units of time we can easily calculate the time taken by the different objects that shows the different motion so many of the objects that are present around us they are moving so if you want to know how fast they are moving then we need to calculate the speed speed is a measurement of any object that covers the distance per unit time that means speed can be defined as the measurement of the distance covered per unit time you may have observed the speedometer speedometer present in some bikes or cars this speedometer tells us how fast the car or the bike is traveling and the speedometer is made up of odometer or it shows the presence of odometer and needle odometer shows the distance traveled by the vehicle or uh, the odo odometer shows the distance in kilometers that can be traveled by the vehicle and needle is present which indicates the speed of uh, the car or the bike that travels the different kilometers per hour so odometer shows the distance traveled per kilometers and needle shows the speed of a journey at different kilometers per hour so this is how the speedometer is an instrument that helps us to calculate the speed of any vehicle that means the speed of any car or the bike we can estimate or we can calculate by using the by observing the meter that is fixed in the vehicles that is nothing but speedometer so as I told you just before, uh, just before I told you that speed can be defined as a measurement of the distance traveled by an object per unit time. So speed can be calculated by using the formula distance by time and the units of speed are meter per second and kilometer per hour. Let us take one example to calculate the speed. So, if a car is moving or if a car moves 50 meters within 10 seconds. So, if a car moves 50 meters within 10 seconds, then we can calculate the speed by using this data that has been given. Distance is 50 meters and time is 10 seconds. Now, here the speed is 5 which is given. So, so the average speed of the car is 5 meter per second per second it is moving or it is traveling 5 meters in this way we can calculate the speed of any object by using the distance by using the formula distance by time so in the lesson motion and time we have discussed about the different types of motion that were translatory rotatory and oscillatory motion so the different object shows the different motions depending upon the path of the motion uh, we can classify them in the different types of movements and we have also studied about the time and speed time is nothing but the duration in which the events happen and speed is a measurement of an object distance per unit time so these are the things that we have studied in the lesson motion and time and here the lesson ends meet you in next class thank you